This is part two of the alternator testing series and this is going to be dealing with the rectifier which is um, a component that lives a couple of layers down um, in, inside the alternator but you don't need to take the alternator off if you've got decent access like this um, and I'll show you three simple tests to um, help you identify whether your rectifier is a problem or not. Basically what the rectifier does because the alternator generates alternating current the rectifier and your car can't use alternating current the rectifier rectifies that alternating current to a DC current so and it does that by a series of diodes and all diodes are simply put are um, one-way valves for electricity so if a diode fails and the rectifier isn't doing his jo its job like it should then um, there are three very very specific things that uh, that can happen and uh, and I'll show you how to test for those now just going to be doing using a, a multimeter you can use a simple multimeter although on one of the tests um, a cheap multimeter might give you a spurious reading so um, it's something that I've noticed on cheap ones so I'm going to be using my fluke and um, we'll get things set up for the first test all I'm going to do is have it set to DC volts, black in the com, red in the volt socket and I'm going to be putting the red multimeter lead onto the uh, B plus post on the alternator so that's the post that has the big fat lead coming off it. I'm going to put the red multimeter lead on that and then the black multimeter lead will go onto the alternator casing as a, as a ground. Um, I'm going to have the engine running and the engine revving uh, up to around about two and a half thousand revs and we're going to see what the, D the DC output is of the alternator. Just again for good luck. Okay, so that time, I think first time it maxed out 14.68, this time 14.53. Just bring it off minimum maximum and it's now just ticking over quite nicely at 14.3. So that's the first indication that everything's okay with the rectifier. One of the first things that you would see if a rectifier or a diode was failing, causing the rectifier to not do its job, you'd see a reduced voltage normally less than 13 and a half maybe even down to 13 volts so that's the first test passed okay next test is to do an AC voltage test okay so I've now got it on AC voltage and the absolute maximum figure you're looking for is 0.5 volts AC um, I personally wouldn't be happy with much more than 0.2 0.3 and as you can see we're uh, barely touching 0.1 volts AC. All I'm going to do now though is just rev the engine against two and a half thousand revs and just make sure it doesn't, when the alternator's under load, it doesn't start pushing out AC voltage. Excellent, so what we saw there was a maximum of 1.4 volts AC and if I take the minimum maximum off it's still hovering again there. So those two first tests really are showing me that the rectifier is absolutely fine. A good quantity of DC voltage, minimal quantity of AC voltage, a 
and I'll show you one final test that um, will uh, be the, the cherry on the cake if you like. To prepare for the diode test I'm going to remove this great big lead here. Uh, this is a permanent live though to the battery so I'm going to be protecting it as soon as it comes off just with this length of um, inner tube to fit over it so it doesn't short to the bodywork. Be very very careful with that. You might even be better to disconnect your battery negative lead if you want. And then just to make sure there's no additional uh, surface voltage going through the alternator. See the, the thin connector just there. I'm going to disconnect that so the alternator is completely isolated from, uh, from the rest of the electrical system. Okay, so we're all set up now. The little wire has been disconnected and I've got this uh, inner tube uh, condom <laughs> over, uh, over the permanent live wire. So the alternator now is like a standalone component. So remember me saying about the diodes being one-way valves for electricity. Um, so what, what should be happening is the alternator should only allow um, current uh, voltage current to um, to flow out that way into the electrical system if a diode fails it allows current to flow backwards into the alternator and it can cause a parasitic drain on your battery so if you've got a parasitic drain and you've done all your fuse checks and um, you know it's still a mystery um, this is a, a brilliant in fact I would even start with this test because it's so quick and easy before um, you know trying to mess with fuses if you have got a parasitic drain so I'm going to be back to the cheap multimeter here and um, and all we're going to be doing we're going to be doing a specific diode test so that's that setting just there black in the comm socket I've had to move it on this alt on this multimeter see where the diode setting is so red there so we'll turn it on and what I'll be doing for the first test is putting the red lead on the alternator casing if it's a bit mucky give it a bit of a scratch I'm going to be holding the red lead on the multi on the alternator casing and the black lead will be going onto this post here and um, and it's a, spe a specific reading that we're looking for which is um, a reading of 500 to 800 millivolts on the multimeter and um, and I'll show you that now Okay, so red multimeter, multimeter lead on the alternator casing, black lead on the post, and if we can just about see that reading, if we can get it settled down, there we go, 521. So that's between 500 and 800, so that's the first test done, and all I'm going to do now is reverse the leads and I want a figure of one or overload, basically no reading at all going the opposite direction. So we do the reverse test now with the red lead on the alternator post. Can you see that there? Red lead on the alternator post, black lead on the alternator casing. And we should see now on the multimeter, no reading at all. Let me just do that, focusing on the multimeter, no reading, see it stayed at one. So that shows the diode pack um, is working absolutely fine. Because what's happening when, when you do that check, when the, um, the multimeter is sending out an electrical pulse through the, um, the red lead, and when it's doing it on the alternator casing, and the black lead is registering it on the alternator post, that means the diode are allowing that electrical pulse to flow that way through the alternator. When I put the red lead on that post and the black lead up there, because the diodes are a one-way valve and they're doing their job, they don't allow that electrical signal to make it to the black lead, so that's why you get no reading on your multimeter. So a good healthy charging voltage, 14 volts or more, tiny AC voltage, um, as you saw on my 0.1 volts AC and a one-way um, reading on the diode test remember 500 to 800 though just because you get a reading one way it's still got to be within that range 500 to 800 and so if you get all those three things spot on 
then your diode pack and rectifier are absolutely fine and if any of your readings are out of spec and it points to the rectifier you don't need to change the whole alternator the rectifier is replaceable on its own for around about 30 pounds for the part you do have to take the multimeter the alternator off and you do have to do a bit of soldering but you know it, it doesn't mean a whole new alternator so um, Hopefully you find all that information useful and uh, thanks very much for watching.